Hey everybody, how is it going? So you guys like the uh, tour of the Epic Tool Car, so I figured uh, I would go through and do the uh, Master Series KRL 1163 uh, walkthrough. So um, I did a questionnaire a while back on my Instagram page um, about kind of what content and uh, what kind of different content that people want to see. And they wanted to see my toolbox setup, which I really don't go through very often. I think they see it in the pictures and stuff that I post when I'm working on cars and certain jobs and stuff. So I'm um, just naturally uh, mechanics and people that are into tools obviously want to know that kind of stuff. So I'm going to do a walkthrough of the Master Series tool car. If you haven't, go check out the uh, tour. I'm pointing over here. You probably can't see it, but uh, my Epic tool car, uh, I did a walkthrough of it as well. I didn't really go through any of the tools in it. Same with this. I'm not really going to go through any of the specific tools. I might do like a walkthrough later of all of the tools. Those just tend to be really lengthy. Um, but if you have any questions about any of the tools, uh, feel free to reach out and ask. I'm happy to answer the questions. So I'm going to pull you off the pod here. And let's get into it. So this is the KRL 1163 uh, 95th anniversary snap-on box. Um, I got this for a really good deal. Um, like uh, Basically right after the 95th anniversary ended, um, I got it early in the next year so i think it was just leftovers um i didn't really clean anything up so what you see is what you get um, i run a small business out of my garage so um this is where i hang my keys and stuff i just got you know cheap little magnets on there um, and then i had the slots and dots kind of all set up but then as time has gone on i added my laptop and then both my scan tools which will eventually be moved as well as the laptop i won't be using them inside the toolbox all the time which will be nice so that way I can actually use my hutch and top of my box a little bit more. Um, but anyways, I had all this set up uh, for ratchets and everything, stuff that I used a lot of. But now that I've got all this stuff in the way, it just seemed I was always hitting something or messing something up. So I just took it away and now it's in my tool cart for now, uh, which works still. Um, so on the top here, I've got a couple of Matco magnets, the expandable ones, the uh, snap-on uh, articulating light, which I do love. Um, their neck light, nice big old Matco pry bar. It won't fit in anything else. Matco uh, speaker. Um, if you can't tell already, I am not a ultra brand loyalist. I would say 80% of my tools, maybe more, are uh, Snap-on. Um, I am a uh, service loyal to, loyalist, if that's what you want to call it. So uh, I will buy whoever treats me good. So I've had good uh, dealers throughout the tool companies throughout the years, but uh, regularly, I've always had good snap-on dealers, so that's why everything turned out uh, to be mostly snap-on. Got my Matco fan up there. Um, all right, so let's get into it. Actually, I'll start on the side here. So I've got uh, just a couple tools and the snap-on magnet up here just hanging on there. So I've got a uh, OTC uh, fuel injector kit, the Smoke Pro on there, and then top drawer. Let's start in here. So I've got inspection sheets um, and just kind of – this is kind of like a – I don't know. As you can see, I've got customer money in there that I got to deposit. Um, I've got uh, this is three eighths digital torque wrench from Snap On, the half inch, just random miscellaneous stuff and extra sockets that I don't really use, um, and then some tools that I actually haven't put away yet. So just kind of miscellaneous stuff. Next drawer down, kind of same thing like all of this is going to be overflow for my tool cart if you like i said if you saw my tool cart video or haven't seen it um that's pretty much what i work out of most of the time so it's got all of my stuff that i use every day so most of this stuff is just going to be extras that i'm not using on a day-to-day -day basis so i'll start over here on the left so kind of miscellaneous just magnets and scrapers mirrors and uh valve adjustment uh Oh gosh, feeler gauges, sorry. I lost my train of thought there. Uh, feeler gauges, I work on a lot of Hondas, so do valve adjustments a decent amount. Um, fuel injector adapters, brake line bender, just miscellaneous stuff in this drawer. Like I said, this box is extra, so you're gonna find mostly just miscellaneous stuff. So some punches and chisels, um, some just extra tire plugs and grease for my guns and uh, stuff. Fluids, miscellaneous fluids for, you know, whatever. I've got glass cleaner in there, tubbo towels, disinfectant wipes, my overflow jug, uh, clear nail polish 
for like if, if it's spliced into a wire or something and need to repair it or find a cut or whatever it depends on the situation in the car and the customer so uh, extra pliers channel locks uh, clamps uh, rubber insulator for exhaust just kind of miscellaneous stuff um, i mean obviously this isn't too miscellaneous in this drawer then we start getting into my kits um, i do have just a cheap harbor freight locker over there uh, which I want to get a couple of different lockers added onto the actual toolbox, but right now I just don't have it. And it's, that one's already full. So this is just houses like a lot of my kits and stuff. Snap on DMM, uh, terminal kit, oil pressure gauge, rethreader, heat gun for Matco, snap on tap and die set, extra double bent, uh, wrenches, um, flathead flat wrenches like really thin flat wrenches for like brake jobs and stuff when the uh slide pin is spinning and you're breaking them loose which is really nice and those are from home depot i think super cheap they don't have the 1719 so i just bought that specific one from matco so now i have a complete set uh piece of junk slide hammer for freight. i hate that thing if you work out in the rust belt slide hammers never work anyways you always got to get the air hammer out seems uh, universal coolant pressure tester, uh, which works really well. I think it was like 85 bucks on Amazon, which was super nice. Uh, snap on files, map gas, harmonic puller. Sorry, I couldn't read it through the phone. Bottom drawer, some more kits. Master injector kit from snap on bore scope. The uh, Lyle air hammer, which I love for the fan clutches. It's awesome uh, compression test, I think, compression gauge, accessory kit for the Smoke Pro, and then some uh, grip mats, which I do love. I have the other smaller one as well. Sorry, that was out. But that one as well, I do really like those. They come in handy. All right, now we're gonna be on the right side here. Uh, air hammer, chisels, extended uh, punches, or chisels, whatever, flat tips for air hammer bits for the uh, air hammer extended i've never even used this um grinder or cutter i mean sorry uh air cat 1250k i think i don't use much air anymore so uh, mostly the air hammer is the only thing i use out of there and then crush washers for oil changes safety glasses this drawer as you can tell i finally got organized i'm going to start doing this more throughout other drawers but i'm going to get a new box at some point i'm going to go with a bigger box um so i I won't, don't want to put a ton of money into this box because obviously if I get a bigger box, I'm going to organize it differently. So, uh, extra ratchets, you see what's in there. I'm trying to keep this video semi, uh, short. So, uh, as you can see, this is the, <laughs> it's supposed to be the Diag drawer. This is just a mess drawer. I am going to, when I get my Diag cart, all of this stuff will be put in there and organized correctly along with my two scan tools. I'm going to put a monitor in there with my laptop. Uh, and then for the scan tools as well, this is just a bag for my Varus Edge, just with extra stuff for the scope, uh, the probes or the, uh, yeah, the probes and stuff. Uh, this is the OTC Honda Acura ball joint adapter set. It's just in a snap-on bag because uh, it just came in a box with like no case or anything, which was kind of a bummer uh, for the price that it cost and everything. I was like kind of bummed that they didn't at least give me a bag or something. Snap-on TPMS4, bearing race. Uh, press kit, thermal imager elite, uh, and the multi probe. So that's pretty much it. Um, there's really nothing specific. Um, I do want to go over a couple things on the box itself. So, um, compared to the uh, Master Series and the Epic, so if you know much about Snap on, then you know there's obviously a difference between the Epic and the Master Series. I'm not going to go through all of the specifics there. The Epic's a little bit bigger. Uh, they're supposed to be welded differently and all this stuff. I don't really know all the absolute specifics. One of the biggest major differences between the Epic and the Master Series is the drawers. So as you can see, the drawers stick out and they collect dust, which is kind of a huge pain in the butt, especially with gloss black. They are flat on the Epic, so they don't stick out. And they actually are like the grip latch versus these. There's a slide underneath that you unlock it with. Um, so that's one con about the Master Series that I don't like um, is the, the drawers stick out and they collect a lot of dust. They're easy, they get hit easily, so you, you have a lot of chips on them and stuff, which sucks. 
Um, but aside from that, I actually do love the box. When I bought this box, I was not, I'm gonna put you back on the pod here. Um, when I bought the box, oops, sorry. Uh, when I bought the box, I did not even think about like drawer layout or anything like that. I just, I just wanted something. I had enough cash to pay for a box. Um, and I didn't want to put it on credit or anything like that. I just wanted to pay for it cash. Uh, we did end up running it through credit so we get the discounts and stuff, but um, then I just wrote a check and paid it off the next week. Uh, but now that I've had the box for longer, uh, this is one thing I wish I would have known at the time. Uh, and I just, like I said, I just didn't really pay attention. I just needed a box that was bigger that would hold all my tools. They were all in cardboard boxes and stuff in my house. It was horrible. Um, but the triple bank layout, so you have this divider here, and then of course this divider here, which this one's normal. You can actually get them custom where this divider's not here and these drawers are all the same length. Um, some guys like that, some don't. I personally want them all to be the same length. Um, it would help the way I organize my tools better, uh, but you know, not everybody would like that. So you gotta kinda see what's good for you and what works for you. It's nice to be able to look at somebody else's box, kinda see how they have it laid out, and then you can kinda decide how you wanna lay yours out. Another thing about this one is the bigger drawers. Not all of them have these two bigger drawers. They're kind of a wasted space um, because they're so deep. Not a lot of stuff fits in there unless you're putting cases and stuff. And that's what lockers are for in my mind. So I've got a lot of wasted space in this box that those cases and boxes and stuff should be in lockers out of the way and then just tools should be in there. So that's kind of some things that I'm gonna be changing in the future with my new box. I already have it picked out and exactly what I want and such. So I just gotta get to that point where I can pay for it. Um, I don't typically do like loans or anything like that. Everything, I, this is all paid for in cash. Um, so I try not to keep a balance at all through Snap-on. If I do, do a truck balance, I try to pay them off within a couple weeks. Uh, it just seems to be better that way. You can't buy as much stuff as fast, but it's nice because I don't have that hanging over my head all the time. So don't, don't get me wrong, some of it was bought on credit, um, like my scan tool in the cart, and then I slowly just paid big chunks off as time went on. Um, so, but 98% of it was paid for in cash. As you can tell, like I said in the video, going through the stuff, I have multiple things. I'm wearing a Cornwell hoodie. I don't honestly care uh, who makes it. It doesn't matter to me. Um, as long as I get good service from the company, so whether it be Matco, Mac, Cornwell, Snap-on, uh, you know, I know there's other brands, Gear Wrench, Milwaukee, whatever. As long as I can get good service, I can get the tools warrantied out. Um, I had some uh, wrenches that I bought from Cornwell, and then I got a new Cornwell dealer for because I moved shops, and he wouldn't warranty them out. So then I ended up getting rid of them and buying the Maco ones. So I, I traded them in, lost a ton of money, and bought the Maco ones because I know that I use those a lot. And so when one broke, I didn't want to have to deal with getting it warrantied out and sending it in and being out those wrenches. I wanted to be able to take it, get it warranted out right away. If you didn't have it, get a, a, a loaner. Um, so that's a big deal for me. So um, there's always the debate between Matco and Snap-on and Mac and Snap-on and Mac and Matco, and Cornwall and Mac, and Milwaukee and Snap-on. Like everybody, there's all these debates going around online. Who cares? We're all in it to complete the same job, uh, do the same thing. We're trying to get the job done, get it done as fast as possible, and have good tools that are reliable in the end. Um, so I, I, I can't stand that debate. Um, as you can tell, like I said, I've got multiples of everything. I do have Snap-on, I do have Milwaukee, half-inch impacts, both. Um, I use them both, they both serve different purposes for me. So uh, yeah, that's just one man's opinion. Obviously, everybody's got them out there and now that we can all post on social media and YouTube and whatever, and there's no repercussions, pretty much anybody can say whatever they want. Uh, so it just gets annoying. So a little side ramp. So anyway, like I said, if you guys have any questions, KRL 1163 Master Series box. Uh, I won't go into many specifics like details and specifications on the boxes because you can always just look that up. You're gonna want to look it up anyways to find out cubic square inch storage and all of that. Uh, that's that's all personal preference. You know, you're gonna have to find out what works best for you. This is just to try to give you an idea of how my particular box is set up. Um, and like what this looks like inside the drawers and stuff. So like I said, any questions, always reach out. I'm sure I've said that like 65 times now. So I appreciate you guys watching the videos and uh, we'll be talking to you soon with some new videos. Thanks, bye-bye.